5.35 in the morning. Made another video for you. Don't worry, I didn't let you down. I was up at 4 this morning. I just went ahead and I put together um, a lot of information for you guys. I'm going to be talking about some really good stuff in this video. It's pretty simple stuff, but it might be stuff that you guys haven't thought of before. But I'm going to turn the camera around real quick. Can you do that while you're filming? I guess you can't. Hang on. I don't know if you guys can see on the reverse camera, but I went ahead and put together a uh, lot of information for you guys here. So I'm going to be kind of going through it. Um, I'm going to have some pictures that I'm going to have up on the screen. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm talking about, and then I'm going to be using the whiteboard again. Um, I've had a couple people tell me the whiteboard idea was kind of cool on the last video, so I'm going to try to use it again. Um, I just feel like for me at least it's easier to kind of explain what I'm trying to talk about whenever I can show you something and then just kind of go through and talk about it and point and do things like that. So uh, stay tuned and I'm going to show you something. All right, just for grins. So I had one person ask me how I had this whole setup with the whiteboard and how I was able to film from the top aiming down. Uh, but this is literally what I did. So y'all are probably going to laugh at me for this, but this is how I had it set up. So if you look, I'm in the kitchen. That's the whiteboard right there. And this is the... Uh, probably remember that little image from the last video, but that's kind of how I was uh, explaining barometric pressure. Um, if you guys are interested in learning a little bit about barometric pressure, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, it's going to kind of talk about that and how, how it works and everything. But um, anyways, so I literally opened up this microwave and I put the phone on it facing down. That's how I was able to get that little shot. It's really not a perfect shot. Um, so Brittany and I are going to be getting our own place pretty soon here, so um, I'll, hopefully I'll have my own specific room just for shooting these videos, and this whiteboard will actually be up on the wall, so that way I can just kind of, I can, uh, you know, do the same thing except have a better angle, maybe some better lighting, and uh, it'll be a little bit higher quality for you guys. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to get into it, and I just figured I'd show you that setup real quick. Alright guys, so I put this little illustration together. I know what you guys are thinking. David, that shot was terrible. The camera is sideways. Ugh. So you guys, okay. I literally just spent like 30 minutes filming this entire little video. I made the little drawing. I had everything written out. And I realized the freaking camera is sideways. So there's a part of me that wanted to just leave it in there. I was like, eh, it's not that bad. But I can't do that to you guys. So I'm going to have to refilm that whole shot. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw it. It's going to be a little bit different, um, but it's okay because I feel like I left a couple things out in that video, or that little uh, clip anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and refilm that, and uh, I'm going to insert it right here. All right, guys, take two. So <clears throat> what I was going to tell you was in that first video is uh, I just kind of did a little illustration here. I'm going to kind of show you where everything is. So uh, this is the body of water right here. Um, this is going to be like a little runoff. You find any, any residential suburban area is going to have these little runoffs in it, but anyways, um, so a little bridge going over the top, body water right here. Um, this is going to be kind of like a little, little area where the, uh, the water kind of widens a little bit. And then this is going to be a little spillway. Um, so that's going to be a little water flowing over. And then these right here are supposed to be little uh, air bubbles. So that's kind of what you're looking at at the top view of this picture. Okay guys, so this type of fishing right here, um, I've been doing this for about 15 years. So this is like my favorite type of fishing. There's a couple reasons for this. Um, bass are just super fun to catch. You know, they're super fun to catch, pretty easy species to catch. Um, and on top of that, most people that are watching this video right now have spots like this that are super close to their house. That's another reason why I like doing it because most people, you know, they either work or they go to school or they do both. They don't really have a whole lot of time. You know, something like this, you know, this is going to be, this type of scenario is going to be in a lot of people's backyards. Um, so you could literally just, you know, drive 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to these spots and go and catch fish all the time. So that, that's what makes this really nice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share a couple things with you real quick. So I'm going to talk about finding these spots. Um, so maybe you just moved to a new area or maybe you just, I don't know, maybe you've never driven past these before. Um, but if you go to Google Maps, this is what I do. Um, I already know of a few spots that are kind of close by, so I normally don't do this unless I kind of get tired and I want to look for a new spot. But if you go to Google Maps and you just type in satellite view, um, you can get pictures, you can find you can find these little spots. Just go to satellite view, it's going to have little satellite images, and you can find little bodies of water that you never even knew were there. Um, so that's how I found uh, these spots that I'm going to show you right here. Okay. 
Okay, cool guys. So uh, we're just going to talk about this again. So I already kind of showed you what everything was. Um, this this spot right here is actually really, really, really ideal. Um, so there's a couple reasons for this. A lot of people will tell you not to fish by roadways like this. Um, of course, don't fish off the bridge. Most of the time, it's not allowed anyways. Um, but just, you know, go fish off the bank. But anyways, the reason why this is an ideal spot is for a couple of reasons. So as you can see, the water kind of goes wide like this. Usually, not always, but usually when the, when the water is wide like this, um, there's going to be a deep area in the middle here, um, which is good for a few reasons. Um, one reason is because in the wintertime, you know, you, with shallow water like this, um, like at least in Texas, I mean, sometimes it drops below freezing, um, and that can be uh, not so not so good for the fish. Um, but uh, but what I can tell you is, is in the winter time when there's a deep pocket like this, they can go in there and they can survive. There's a few reasons why this is good. Um, anytime the fish have somewhere to go, they can go down there. They can survive. Fish can live in this ecosystem here for years and years and years and be able to survive. And anytime they're there for that amount of time. Um, they have the opportunity to get really, really big. Um, so that's one good thing about this spot is that it has this little deep area here. Um, another reason why this is a good spot is with this bridge right here in Texas especially, it gets really, really hot. Sometimes it gets over 100 degrees. A lot of times it does. Um, but anytime there's a bridge like this, they have shade. So a lot of times if it's really hot in the middle of the day, you're fishing, you know, noon, 12, you know, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the afternoon. Um, you can uh, find the fish hiding under here because they're trying to uh, trying to cool off from the sun. Um, another reason why the deep part is really good is the same reason that for the heat. You know, anytime it gets really really hot, the fish are going to try to go down to the bottom here um, to try to cool off. So that's that's another good reason. Uh, this is a, a prime spot, you know, for fishing from the bank. Um, this little spillway right here. So there's a couple of reasons why this spillway is good. One of the reasons is that a lot of the bait fish are going to be uh, getting washed down here. So you know the, the, they're going to be there's going to be a, another body of water this way, and the bait fish are going to be um, you know going down. And the big the big bass are going to be waiting right here. They're going to be waiting for that bait to fall in, little bluegill, shad, different things like that. And they're going to be hitting it as as they're coming through. So that's one reason why this is good. Another reason is with this, anytime there's moving water like this, especially when there's a spillway, kind of like a little mini waterfall, it's going to be oxygenating the water. So oxygen levels are going to be really high. There's going to be fish that are going to be just kind of hanging out here because it's a nice, nice little place for them. Okay, cool. So kind of going back to the Google Maps thing for a second, um, one thing that you have to consider is the, uh, the weather, of course. So. Um, the thing that, that's not so good about a body of water like this, it's not so good, but at the same time it is good. But one of the things to think about is if it's rained recently, because in a situation like this, even just one or two inches of rain or even less can actually change this condition quite a lot. Because if you think about it, this is a spillway, this is a runoff, this is, you know, this is coming in from the drains on the streets and everything. So anytime it's raining, all the water is going into here. So one or two inches of rain can seriously affect what's going on in this water. It can rise the level. Um, it can change the water clarity. Like you might find this spot, you know, uh, say it was two weeks ago and you went there and it was super clear, there was all this structure, you saw tons of fish and everything, um, but then you come back two weeks later and it's rained um, and that same beautiful looking water that you were looking at before is um, super murky, it's you know chocolate milk colored, you can't really see anything. Um, that makes it difficult because the, the visibility goes down. So anytime the visibility goes down, fish have a harder time seeing the bait. Um, so you might have to switch over to something that gives off a little bit more vibration. Um, you know, a lot of people try to throw uh, chartreuse colored lures, different things like that. I'm not going to get too much into that because that's for a whole other video. That could be an hour long video in itself talking about different baits. Um, but anyways, you get the idea. So a little bit of rain can really change the situation here. A good thing though um, in this type of situation is even though it's kind of frustrating when you get there and it's chocolate milky, it's too, too much rain, you're not catching any fish. Um, is a couple weeks after that, once the water's gone back down and the, the clarity's gotten back, you know, and you can actually see what's going on, um, is usually these streams are connected to much larger bodies of water. So anytime they're connected to large bodies of water and the water rises, bigger fish will be coming into here. So you might have some, you know, lake that's upstream somewhere and tons and tons and tons of big bass have gotten washed into here. So frustrating you know at the moment but just know that you know if you go back a couple weeks later um, there's probably going to be some new fish in here and maybe some some monsters that just got you know washed downstream one other thing to keep in mind guys in this situation personally I don't like to keep fish that come out of this 
and there's a few reasons for that. Um, I'll talk about you know the health reasons of course is you know there's a lot of pesticides and there's you know if this is in a suburban area everybody uses pesticides in their yard all of that gets washed into here so the water quality isn't going to be the best for, for eating um, so I would recommend doing that one and secondly I wouldn't recommend keeping fish out of here anyways I personally don't because it's really easy in a small ecosystem like this to go in there and just mess it up. You know what I mean? If, if the bite is on that day, there might only be five, six, seven, ten bass in this area, you know, good sized bass. And if you go in there and you wipe it all out, now all those fish are gone. So not only does it kind of mess up the ecosystem a little bit, but it makes it to where, you know, if, you, if somebody else wants to go fish the spot or something like that, um, you know, there's no fish there anymore. And before you know it, you tell all your buddies and now the, the fishing spot has, has no fish in it, you know, at least until another heavy rain. So I wouldn't recommend keeping fish out of here. That's just me personally. You guys do what you want. Um, I just wouldn't recommend doing that. Okay, guys, I'm going to be talking about some other stuff real quick here. So um, let's just pretend that you just pulled up to this spot. You know, you parked your little car over here and uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna walk up to the spot. So what I would personally do in this type of situation, especially if I haven't been here before, is I would stand here, okay? And I would cast out this way. I would cast, I would stand about 20 feet away if you can uh, from the water and just start fan casting. And what I would personally recommend, and I actually got this uh, tip from my brother. My brother watches a lot of professional fishing people on YouTube and on the television, is uh, casting like this. So this is fan casting. This isn't a secret. Um, I didn't invent this. This is something that a lot of people know, and it really changed the way that I fish. But um, what I would do is I would try to cast in this area first, okay, and fan like that. So when you get here, take a look at the water, make up your plan, decide how you're going to fish it, um, and then just go ahead and, and fan cast like this. Don't cast all the way across right when you get there. The reason why I say that is because if you do cast all the way, um, you know, and you, you hook into a fish over here whenever you whenever you hook into this fish you're gonna have to reel it all the way across this water so you have to remember this is a really small body of water so just throwing a rock in over here you know if you threw a rock in off the shore the fish in this area are gonna hear it and they're gonna notice it and they're gonna get kind of weirded out you know what I mean um, just imagine you're chilling just hanging out with your buddies and then all of a sudden a big loud noise you're gonna be looking around and you're not gonna be thinking about eating you're gonna be like man what the heck was that so cast here because when you catch a fish on this side and you reel it across this water, just think about it, the fish is gonna be thrashing around. I'm sure all of you guys have caught fish before. It's gonna be thrashing around on the surface or it might dive down to the bottom and kick up a bunch of rocks and mud and stuff. And then before you know it, you caught that one fish and then you don't catch another fish after that. It might be because you spooked them all. They might've went down this way or they might just be like chilling at the bottom, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. So cast this side first, okay? Hopefully you catch a couple. And another good thing too is you're going to be casting on the bank and a lot of times they hang out on the bank anyways because you have trees and, and bushes and grass and stuff that's hanging over and they're kind of hanging out right here waiting for bugs to fall in, you know, uh, getting a little bit of shade from the sun, that type of thing. So great idea to cast on this side first. Then once you've hit this side, then you can start fanning out this way. You can start casting like that, you know. Um, like I said before, you know, this little area right here, there's probably going to be some bass in here. Um, so it might be a good idea to fish this way and then kind of push them down and then once you get to here you're, you're most likely going to catch some fish right in this area and if you've casted into this you know five six seven eight nine ten times it doesn't mean there's not any fish in there um, it just might mean that they're you know for some reason they're not biting if it's super clear um, you may consider actually trying to agitate the fish a little bit so if you see a big bass in here and you've been casting 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 and he's not biting and you switch lures, he's still not biting, you may try to agitate him. So if, if he's, you know, fishing, and I'll talk about this in another video more in depth, but if there's, if there's a bass right here, you may try to even almost hit him. You may try to cast right on top of him and try to nudge him, you know, and, and if, if you're able to actually hit the fish, a lot of times they'll do a defensive strike and they'll try to, they'll try to actually attack your lure, and as soon as they attack it, you know, as you can see it inside the fish's mouth, set it. Um, you know that's a really great way to catch a fish if they're not if they're not biting and you've already switched lures you've already tried different things they're not biting try to agitate them a little bit so another thing too guys especially if you're going fishing with your buddies um, you know come up with a game plan before you get there um, don't, don't be talking real loud don't be running around you know um, personally I like to just kind of step really really lightly because um, if you're walking real lightly they're probably not going to hear you um, so walk real lightly, don't talk real loud, 
talking kind of quiet like I am right now, usually they can't hear you unless you're right on top of the water, um, so you should be okay, but just don't talk real loud. Another thing too um, is keep in mind where the sun is at, right? So if the sun, let's just say the sun is on this side, okay? So the sun's on that side. I would definitely suggest fishing on the side that we're talking about right now. This is for an obvious reason. If the sun's over here and your shadow's being casted this way, it's going to be really hard to get on the bank without casting your shadow into the actual water. And anytime your shadow's in the water, it's going to freak the fish out if they can see it. So definitely try to fish on this side if you can. Um, that'll just give you the best, the best chance of not casting your shadow into the water. One other thing too, I don't know if this is true or not. I've always done it though since I've heard about it because it does kind of make sense. Um, but a lot of people say it's good to not wear really bright colored clothing. You know, white, yellow, green. It's a good idea to not wear that because if you're standing on the, uh, you know, especially like a bright colored hat, good idea not to wear that because the fish might be able to see it. Don't know if that's true or not. Ever since I heard about it, I've done it. It seems to work. It seems to be true most of the time so far. So just a suggestion. Another thing too guys is a lot of these things that I'm talking about it's not going to affect the small fish as much you know it's, when you walk up you'll notice a lot of times small fish will get a lot closer than bigger fish will the bigger fish are big for a reason guys you know they're big because they're smart they may have already been caught once or twice before in their lifetime so they're kind of a little bit more wary as a younger fish might be so doing all these little things like I'm talking about being quiet you know, um, walking real lightly, talking not so loud, not standing on the side of the sun, all these different things. That's going to help you catch bigger fish too because they're smart. They, they know these types of things and they may not really fully understand what you are to them, but they do see you as a threat. So just keep that in mind. Bigger fish, smart, do these little techniques I'm talking about and you should have some good. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Um, I felt like I went over some good stuff in the video. Um, real basic stuff too. I mean, some of it's really common sense, guys. Like these these things that I told you about, like I said, I didn't invent this. I didn't, you know, come up with these ideas on my own. Um, I learned it from somebody, you know. I learned it from Bill Hand or I learned it from, you know, Doug Hand and, you know, all these different people. Um, you know, uh, I, I learned it from somebody just like anybody else did. So if you learned something from the video, that's awesome. You know, if there's anything that I can do to make these videos better, please let me know. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm seriously considering making a video every day for a month just to see how it goes. Um, I don't know how long I'd be able to do it. I think probably a month would be as long as I could sustain that for. Or who knows, maybe, maybe I'd turn it into something. Um, but anyways, uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to make the video better. Like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.